So I had the opportunity to speak with Brian Michelle, founder of the 10 Telescopes Initiative, located in Guelph, Ontario, Canada. 10 Telescopes is 3D printing these telescopes, and their purpose is for outreach. People can actually borrow them, schools can borrow them, and uh, have a fun and stress-free astronomy experience. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I know that Brian is going to be checking in on the comments, and uh, he'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks very much for tuning in, and let's get to the interview. Welcome, welcome to the uh, Visible Dark uh, channel, Brian. And um, uh, I guess I'll start off real quick by asking you to explain a bit about the uh, 10 Telescope uh, Initiative for the viewers. Yeah, uh, thanks, John. It's great to be here. Uh, we're really, really excited about uh, the promotion that uh, that you're giving us to, uh, for the 10 Telescopes Initiative, which is uh, to your question, uh, we're actually trying to make telescopes accessible uh, by making a small astronomy library here in Guelph. The, the name is 10 Telescopes. And so our goal was to create 10 telescopes. We thought that might be enough for a community the size of Guelph. Uh, so we make them available for free from the, we call it the Blue Door Astro Library, it's basically a shed in the backyard uh, with a blue door. So uh, we've renovated a bit. And we've got 10 telescopes in there and we make them available, but also there's an open source aspect where we uh, make this um, telescope design available so that anybody, it's, it's 3D printed. So anybody can 3D print the parts of this telescope and then buy the optics and other components and build their own. How do the, um, how do the telescopes compare to um, the performance of a traditional telescope that you would say purchase from a retailer? Well, it's um, the telescope is not hindered by the 3D printing. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, really, it's it's going to be the same question uh, of every other telescope, and that is, what's the quality of the optics? Mm -hmm. We have a couple of, couple of options. Um, so for uh, the more budget minded builds, uh, there's a spherical mirror that you can use, and uh, it's it actually still is a pretty decent performer, but you know, planetary stuff, you might want a little more contrast. Sure. Uh, and in that case, then you can upgrade to a parabolic mirror and and boost the quality a little bit more. But yeah, it will stand up to to uh, most refractors of this class that you can that you can purchase. Okay, awesome. What gave oh, you sorry, the uh, re reflector? I think reflector, I said refractor. Yeah, refractor. I'll <laughs> <reflector. laughs> have to edit. <laughs> okay, so yeah, no problem. Um, what uh, what gave you the idea to make telescopes? Uh, so I've been kind of um, playing around with building components for telescopes for many years, and I actually did uh, take a stab at mirror grinding in my earlier days. Uh, but really, what got me what really got started was my niece. Uh, she knew I loved astronomy. She also had an interest in astronomy. And she asked me one day how she could have a telescope. And I was heavy into the 3D printing at the time. And so I started designing one in Fusion 360 and prototype one first to make sure things were working well. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I uh, actually I had her build her own. So we gathered all the components and, and she, uh, she came over for a few visits and built her own telescope. I have a niece, a six-year-old niece that's uh, interested in the moon and whatnot. And I was thinking one of your your three D printed telescopes would be really fascinating for her. They're, they're colorful. We've got yeah. we've got one called Barbie, and it's a uh, a pink it's, one. It's got kind of like a pink motif going yeah. on, and we've got Superstar here, which is sort of a, more of a rose color and a blue. And we've, mm -hmm. we've got a few. Bumblebee is yellow and black. You know, we've got some interesting yeah. colors for I, I, I to attract that. kids. The uh, in terms of three D printing these telescopes, uh, can anyone three D print these telescopes? Uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, having access to the files and, and whatnot that you've designed, uh, well, you would need a printer large enough. Some of the components on this, like uh, the rocker box here, this mm -hmm. is a pretty sizable component to print in one piece. Mm -hmm. So you would need a printer uh, with a bed, uh, what we call a three hundred by three hundred millimeter size bed. Um, and so that you're getting into some of the Creality CR10. Um, and if you want to print with the plastic that we print, which really is the best plastic ASA or ABS plastic 
then you want to get into an enclosed printer. So this is not a not really a beginner printer kind of project. It's more like um, medium to um, advanced, slightly more advanced, right. still amateur amateur class printers. Uh, the printer behind me, I don't know if you can see it uh, back there printing away. Yeah, yeah I can see that's that. A, yeah, that's a Voron uh, printer. It's a 300 by 300 by 300. So it's a cute um, build area. And that's that's what we print these telescope. This printer was uh, this printer was used uh, for this telescope right here. Fantastic, that's great. Um, in terms of cost for building one of these, what? How does that factor into it? So you need about seventy dollars worth of plastic. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can buy it in spools. Um, okay. You, know, you, you buy it in a spool like this, and mm -hmm. it's like a filament. Um, so you need about seventy dollars worth of that. Uh, it depends. If you get fancy, maybe you spend a hundred dollars on plastic. Okay, and that's it, building. That's a little bit, it, that's building everything. Aesthetic. Yeah, that's building everything, like the the telescope, the tube, and the rocker, and all that stuff. Yeah, that's right. So all of these all of these components, uh, really the colorful components that you see, mm -hmm. are all three uh, D printed. Okay. Uh, you know, like here's an, we're printing an orange one right now, uh, and we we're considering doing a purple. So um, all of these, so that's about seventy dollars worth of plastic. Back to your question about cost, mm -hmm. um, and then the actual optics. Uh, if you go with a more um, budget friendly, um, you know, uh, you'll get a twenty three millimeter eyepiece and a metal focuser and a red dot finder. Mm -hmm. All these things you're going to be in uh, about three hundred dollars, two hundred, two hundred seventy, three hundred dollars. Okay. Um, for the for the more budget uh, oriented, mm -hmm. uh, and then if you go parabolic, you could. Uh, we're actually bringing on a, a new supplier right now for parabolic mirrors. Okay, uh, and probably a, an additional seventy dollars, something like that, if you wanted to really hit the the premium right. performance. Right, right. Are you um, with these telescopes? You're you're building them right now for outreach purposes for people to borrow them and and use them in that. Uh, um, do you get inquiries with regards to people that want to purchase one for you to support the initiative, make a donation sort of thing, or do you know it's what I mean? Start, it, it, it actually surprised me, um, but yes, some people have been contacting us about purchasing them. I'm not really too sure what we're going to do about that yet. Mm -hmm. um, I was really imagining this as sort of um, a community, the way I had imagined it growing was that we would start a community library and then we'd support other cities in starting up their uh, initiative. Some sort of small astronomy libraries in their communities. Yeah. But yeah, it's quite interesting that there's some interest uh, from people wanting wanting to have one. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not sure. The, the answer is we're not sure what we're going to do about that yet. Right. Um, okay. We might actually start trying to figure out how we could how we could provide them. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm 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 pretty sure that there's a lot of people that are interested in these 3D printed scopes um, for various reasons, but uh, that are going to be even outside of Guelph uh, and wouldn't be able to borrow one, but they would certainly be interested in uh, purchasing one. I'm I'm sure so uh, yeah. that could maybe uh, work to your advantage in terms of uh, a, a pricing you know scenario that allows you to fund the initiative more, uh, keep it keep it going. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we would sell them as kits that people mm -hmm. could build and maybe that would be part of the experience or, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, this is a, this would be a big unit to ship. Um, mm -hmm. but, but maybe I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Sean, we're so early in this whole thing. We only have seven of our own 10 telescopes made. So yeah, yeah <laughs> we're not yeah. sure. We're not sure about supplying them for other people yet, and it's and it's exploding in front of you too in terms of the uh, exposure that you're getting. Uh, you you've been on the news and stuff with this uh, initiative, yeah. talking to the to the news uh, channels and uh, getting a lot of exposure in that way. So um, you know you're you're garnering a lot of attention real fast. Uh, probably yeah. it's probably moving, propelling along a lot uh, faster and and uh, more intensely than you uh, expected or imagined it would. It, absolutely, uh, it, it, I think it's a testament to astronomy as a as a hobby. Um, you know, it's it certainly astronomy has really taken off the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, I've been a long time enthusiast, but but we're certainly seeing um, a lot of newer 
you know, amateur interest and mm-hmm. seems to be, I don't know, maybe, maybe it is well timed. I'm not sure, yeah. but we're getting some interest. So this is, this is um, a labor of love for you, uh, a project that uh, is taking off. Um, it's a lot of work involved. I, I assume you have people that are helping you do this uh, work as well. Oh, absolutely. I, I couldn't actually do this alone. Um, we have, uh, if, if you if you were to have a look at the 10 Telescopes blog, you'll see that we have Scope Building Saturdays. And that's when we bring in the volunteers. And we I try to get all the parts ready. You know, I'll, I'll just make a pile of parts and, and, and then um, I'll try to make all, sure all the hardware and tools are available. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then the volunteers actually do most of the building these days. I think I've only built maybe two or three myself and the volunteers have been building the rest of them. Is it, um, is it, is it difficult to build them or like, can anyone basically do it? I would say anybody with a basic understanding of, of, you know, um, tools, Mm -hmm. uh, would be, would be successful. We have a complete manual. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you're able to uh, show any of those things on the screen or not, Yeah, but, um, but we do have, um, we do have, um, a complete manual on what's called there's a github site that's okay. where we share all the 3d printed files okay and that's where we uh, also have the manual and uh, the bill of materials where you can buy all the things it's a very detailed list that you can download in a pdf okay. um, also a detailed manual in a pdf okay. uh, and we're, we're constantly updating it as as i watch uh, people build them then i try to improve the manual and, and the build order, like what order do you build things in mm-hmm. so that you don't kind of, like, we were kind of having a problem where it was getting difficult to attach the focuser because it, it's hard to get your hand in past the spider. That's right. Uh, so yeah. that's one of the things that, uh, that we changed the build order so that the focuser goes on the scope before it, uh, the spider gets attached. Okay. All right. Interesting. Um, and I guess one of the questions that you're going to get asked a lot is, what can you see with these telescopes? What exactly would they be good for? Well, I mean, anything that you would normally expect to see in a, um, a six inch or 150 millimeter uh, reflector Newtonian. So obviously, obviously the moon is just breathtaking, uh, mm-hmm. you, as you can imagine. Yep. Uh, Jupiter uh, looks great. And of course the four uh, inner moons are, are quite obvious. Um, and then Saturn and, and the Cassini division in Saturn's rings, you can see that quite clearly. Mm-hmm. Uh, clusters are quite beautiful. Uh, globular and open clusters look quite nice in the scope. And, and then some nebulae. Uh, it's really a little bit depends where you're viewing. If you're in the city, you're going to see a little yeah. bit less um, sure. in, in terms of nebulae. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and galaxies like, um, well, Andromeda is huge right so you can't even fit andromeda in the field of view of this scope but um but the core of andromeda and some of the some of the uh some of the brighter closer galaxies okay will present themselves quite nicely yeah nice um one thing that's just coming to mind right now for me is um collimation of the optics how did you go about handling that and uh, making it yeah. um easy enough sure. for people to be able to do yeah, actually, uh, it's interesting. It's a good question. Um, I wish I had one at hand. I don't. But in, in the bill of materials um, mm-hmm. for building this scope is actually a laser collimator. Oh, um, okay. So we we actually, um, in, in the course of building quite a number of these, mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, I keep giving, giving some away. So <laughs> we're having a hard time getting to the 10. So we've actually built more than the seven that we have right now. So we built a number of them, and as we collimate them, uh, we're we're kind of refining our techniques. But at the heart of it, and what we uh, somebody that built would build one on their own, mm-hmm. there's a laser collimator. So there's kind of a visual aspect where we kind of sure. uh, get you started yeah. uh, with the mirrors, uh, where you can just visually assess, okay, where is my collimation roughly, and then uh, and then you move to a laser collimator, and it's included in the bill of materials. So what we're seeing, Sean, is that schools are extremely interested in getting these telescopes in mm-hmm. uh, for their uh, earth and space uh, sciences. Like, so grade six, grade nine, grade 12, these seem to be 
the key years where there's a lot of astronomy uh, being taught. Mm -hmm. And and the and the t right now we've got three out at a local high school, and this Saturday another two are going out to an elementary school. The teachers are very excited about bringing these into the classrooms. So to your question about donations, we're actually considering, but maybe uh, bringing out some corporate sponsors. Maybe we could even print them in their corporate colors, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and and these um, these corporate sponsors could make it possible for schools to, you know, they would rotate through different schools. But, you know, let's say, for example, a corporation could sponsor three telescopes and those three telescopes would go together as a set. Because, mm -hmm. you know, let's say let's say you have 20, 21 students, something like that. Then it would be a telescope for three students. Um, so we're, we're considering something like that because obviously I can't make an infinite number of telescopes on, right. my, yeah. on my own dime. Um, so yeah, we'd love to have some support, but we, we don't, haven't formalized that yet. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Good stuff. Um, okay, Brian, I appreciate you coming on the channel and discussing the 10 telescopes initiative with us. And uh, I'm sure the viewers are going to have a lot of comments and uh, questions. If uh, you're on the, uh, on YouTube at all, you know, watching this, uh, this video and have an opportunity to comment and answer some of those questions that uh, people might have, I'd really appreciate that. Um, oh, yeah. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to discuss uh, this and uh, bring awareness to it. And uh, best of luck and uh, clear skies. <laughs> Thank, thanks, had a lot of, but <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, it's been terrible, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I re I really appreciate your interest and your great questions, Sean. Thank you so much.